I'm overwhelmed. Um, but I don't want that to stop people from celebrating. This is a moment that does deserve to be celebrated. It's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. So we have an update on a story that we did way back, months ago. And I don't know if you remembered, if you're brand new to my channel, I, you, I will link some of the videos into this specific, I'll link some of the videos in the cards so that you can click on them. But Amanda Householder came onto my channel and we talked about a place that her parents owned called Circle of Hope, which was a ranch that helped girls that were from the IFB basically and the crux of the school was to help the kids with issues that they were having and their parents were needing help and Boyd and Stephanie were supposed to help them become better people and on their website they promised to help you know improve you know anything that the parents were experiencing at home and they would just send them to this place and then you know, presto change, everything was supposed to be fine, except that's not what was happening there. And Amanda, who was the daughter of Stephanie and Boyd Householder, had left their house and had left the school years ago. And after leaving and after going through sort of her own understanding of what had happened, had realized that very serious things had been going on there. And she needed to get a better understanding of like what her parents were involved in. And there was some people that started to speak out about what they experienced while they were there. And a lot of the stories were very troubling to her. And as she started to realize that she had somehow been a part of the school indirectly because her parents owned it, she felt a sense of responsibility to help all of the different people that attended this get accountability from her parents. And so she, on March 9th of 2020, started a TikTok page which basically went viral and this was sort of outlining all the different things that her parents had done over the years and the various people that had been affected by what her parents had done the school has been featured widely on you know the instagram page breaking code silence and as you start to learn more about the specific place you realize just how bad it got and now the parents are being held accountable with justice because the attorney general in the state of Missouri says that Boyd and Stephanie Householder are facing 102 big Fs, yeah, for a variety of different offenses from SA on down. And this is going to be one of the biggest cases in this in Missouri state history, and it's all because of what Amanda did. Now, what the kids experienced at this school is not for the faint of heart, and rather than detail and overwhelm you with the graphics, I'm gonna link below the press release by the Attorney General. At this place, the kids were supposed to be learning skills to become better women, which included not being able to wear pants because they had to wear dresses because it's the IFB, doing forced manual labor, labor and reading the Bible. There was absolutely no therapy that was offered, nothing. And the details that came out from the survivors were atrocious from you know, being put into rooms for days, weeks at a time, um, being restrained. Uh, there was even an essay that was connected to Boyd and the charges against him, according to the attorney general, are the biggest case of any of these atrocious crimes against children in the state of Missouri history. Yesterday, my office filed 101 criminal charges and one misdemeanor charge against Boyd and Stephanie Household who are the former owners and operators of the now defunct Circle of Hope Girls Ranch in Boyd's once located in Humansville, Missouri. Boyd Household was charged with 80 offenses. 
Well, how did they get there? Because the state of Missouri has literally no laws protecting children that go to religious institutions. They live in this sort of gray area where the state will not intervene and schools that are private and religious based. Under the veil of the religious tag, these schools can operate with no restrictions, no regulations, and absolutely no monitoring by the state. That means no one from the state has to go to the facility to, to check it, to make sure that it's compliant, to make sure that the children are getting what, the food, the clothing, the beds that they need, that they're being treated humanely. There is literally nothing protecting these kids, no monitoring, no reporting, nothing. In fact, if you think about it in this way, the kids are basically signed over to Boyd and Stephanie. In a lot of ways, they're given custody and then they don't exist. And so nobody knows they're there except for the parents. The state doesn't know who they're there. No one's accounting for them. And because no one's accounting for them, nobody knows what's happening. And the kids were not allowed to call their parents and nor talk about what was going on. And everything was monitored tightly. And parents and children were isolated from one another. And because of all of that, Boyd and Stephanie had a field day and were terror. I mean, it's like reading the press release is, it's mind numbing what these two got away with for such a long time. And it's ultimately no wonder why Amanda Householder took to her platform to be so vocal and so loud. And when I talked to her months ago, she said, I will not stop until my parents are arrested. I will not quit until I see my parents behind bars and held accountable for what they've done. Well, now they are facing a hundred and two charges. So the charges against Boyd are massive. Six counts of second degree um, SA, statutory SA, seven counts of second degree statutory uh, other SA forms, six counts of SA with a, with a minor. It's one count of second degree uh, child SA, 56 counts of ABUSE, and neglect. And all of this could land him in prison for like 500 plus years. 500 plus years. He's 71 years old. So I think the goal here is to get enough charges to stick that he never gets out of prison. In the press conference, the attorney general said that he came into this in, in November of 2020 after the Cedar prosecutors had requested help now, Cedar County, which is located in Missouri, is a very small farming community, and we're clearly in over their head. And I think because of the small network and the sheriff's office being just so, everything being small and Boyd and Stephanie really manipulated and used that to their advantage by chumming up and appearing like they were good people to the extent that even they were able to completely snow the sheriff's office from doing anything. Reports by the state had indicated that Boyd was doing horrific things to girls um, and had substantiated SA claims against four separate people and no, no charges were ever filed against him. So this specific, the charges here include 16 girls and they say that more could be added at any time. This will be ongoing. The charges stem from 2016 to 2020, in June of 2020, and they are terrible. So Amanda updated her Instagram today and or her TikTok today. And she basically just said that she was, well, I'll just let you see it. March 9th, 2020, we posted the video of the inside look of Circle of Hope. 10 years ago, yesterday, a lady posted a story on Mother Jones. Yesterday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, Boyd and Stephanie Householder were arrested. A year ago to the day we posted that video, 10 years to the day they started reporting on Circle of Hope. It took 10 years for anything to get done. It took a year of us nonstop hounding the Sheriff's Department to get anything done. But they finally have been arrested and are being held in jail. I'm overwhelmed, um, but I don't want that to stop people from celebrating. This is a moment that does deserve to be celebrated. I am sad because they are my parents, but something my parents would always tell me is you've made your bed, now you have to lie in it. Well, <laughs> my parents made their bed and now they're gonna have to lie in it. And as hard as that is for me, um, it's, it's about time. Um, 
they did what they did. And I'm just glad that they're being held accountable for it. Something I never, never thought was going to happen. So. so Amanda has been updating and sharing on her Instagram. She actually shared a list of the charges on her Instagram. And she said, I just want to know why it took so long. Why did it take 10 plus years of speaking out? I'm glad we're here, but it took way too long. She also shared this yesterday on her Instagram and said, literally a year ago today, we posted an inside look at Circle of Hope video. Today we are arrested. Why did it take 10 years of speaking out? Why were these girls not believed? Why did the state, why did the state like social services and the police have substantiated claims that were not prosecuted against? Why did it take a viral campaign on TikTok where literally everyone in the United States was screaming at Missouri to do something and Cedar County to do something? Why did it take that long? Think of all of the kids that could have been saved from what Boyd and Stephanie were doing all of those years. This, this school existed for like at least close to two decades. Think of the number of students that were affected by what they did. And this is only including 16. Think of all of the kids that are outside of the statute of limitations that will never get justice for what happened to them. And we need to start talking about not just what they're finally getting justice, why weren't the kids believed, we need to start believing kids, but why are we allowing in the state, in the United States of America, children to go to schools under the guise of religion and have literally no regulations? I am a firm believer that no matter what, anything that involves a child should have regulators, should have people that are visiting the site, who are touring. They need to have reporting. We need to know where the kids are because when you have no regulations, you're just inviting people like Boyd and Stephanie to use it as their playground to harm children. I will never be okay with the IFB, which is which would be <laughs> the Independent Fundamentalist Baptists and this group of uh, a-holes of men that have these schools. They're all through the IFB. And I will never be okay with this cult using these schools to reform girls, to be good moms and good breeders and that's it. When we talk about the Duggars and we talk about the IBLP, the reason why we talk about it is because there are people that are even more dangerous that are like Boyd and Stephanie Householder. There are people who are within this cult that are doing things that are as like way worse than what you could even think of Jim Duggar. Jim Bob Duggar and Michelle Duggar doing. And it's prevalent in this cult because they exist in states that have very loose laws for children and they all homeschool their kids. Their kids are relatively undocumented. Some of the kids don't even have so some of the kids aren't even given social security numbers and they are so under the radar, no one knows about them. And so because no one knows about them, they can use their extreme beliefs to do whatever they want to children under the guise of God. And I'm sure Boyd was using his godly religion because according to Miss Householder Amanda, she claims that her dad and mom were very big into training up the child, Debbie and Michael Pearl's book. And we all know that Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar are also very much into that book. So why do we speak out against the Duggars? Sure, we can support them. Sure, we can support the kids, but this is why. Because there's networks of men in this cult that are doing things that are horrific to children. And yes, there are some really good people in this group, but there's a lot of really bad people. And we need to start making it so that there's no longer silence for these kids, so that the kids that are in this group realize that they don't have to live this way and this is not okay. No child should grow up thinking that under the God guise of religion that they should be paddled and swaddled and zip tied. I mean, cause that's what he was doing. It's terrible. So I'm again going to include the link below for the attorney general's press release. Congratulations to Amanda on a very important day. I'm so proud of you. I will, I'm eagerly going to see if I can get her to come onto my channel for an interview and we can sort of move forward from there. You can check out Breaking Code Silence on Instagram. You can also follow me on Instagram for all the latest updates at Without a Crystal Ball. And you can also follow Amanda's Instagram um, at Berlin Von Mortis. I will include all of those in the description. All right, you guys, bye.